deploying Azure Virtual Desktop can be complex and time-consuming. Wouldn't it be great if you could just press the AVD easy. easy button and have it all done for you? I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. In this episode, we're going to build AVD the easy way with the latest feature, the Azure Virtual Desktop Quick Start. This feature is in preview at this time, so you'll need a special link to access it. And that is linked in the video description down below the video. And while you're down there, if you want to master Azure and improve your career, please click on that like and subscribe button so you can stay on top of all the latest Azure content. This also helps me out by telling YouTube that they should be sharing the Azure Academy with more people, which I would appreciate. Now, when you click that special link in the description, that'll bring you here to the AVD admin page. And on the left, you can see that there's a new item in the blade called Quick Start. And right in the center, it lets us know what you'll be getting when you do this build process. One host pool, one app group, and one user. So let's click Create. Our first choice is if we have an empty or an existing subscription. Choose existing if you have either a traditional Active Directory that you want to use, or you want to use an existing Azure AD domain services, which is a Microsoft managed domain controller solution in the cloud. And both of them will work and are fully supported, but you'll have to pick one or the other, which we'll get to in a minute. If you select an empty subscription, the Quick Start will build Azure AD Domain Services for you, which will take roughly 40 minutes. And by the way, if you're hoping to extend your on-prem Active Directory into the cloud by using Azure AD Domain Services, then you better watch this video first because there's a lot of things you need to understand. Now we need a resource group prefix for the two or three resource groups that we'll be creating through the Quick Start and I'll show you the differences between them at the end. But either way, this is going to make it easier to identify these resource groups. Then select the Azure region that you want to build in. I'll take East US as usual. And for the Azure account, this is referring to your Azure AD global admin credentials. And then we have the domain admin account. What you put in here will depend on if you chose existing or empty. If you chose empty, then this account will become your Azure AD domain services admin. But if you chose existing, this is the credentials that your VMs will use when joining your domain. One thing to keep in mind here is that you will not be able to specify the OU that your VMs will be joined to from the quick start. So if that's a requirement for you, then you'll have to pre-stage those computer objects in the right place. Now onto the identity box. If you chose empty, you'll only have one option here, Azure AD Domain Services. But if you chose existing, then you'll see both Active Directory and AADDS. Select the one that you want and click Next. On this screen, the first options here are to choose either Yes or No. Yes will give you a pooled host pool and No will build a personal host pool. Then we have your image. From the images dropdown, you can see the list of all the options that Microsoft has in the gallery and pick whichever one suits you, or you can select see all images underneath it. And then you can go to my items at the top, choose your own custom VM image, or if you have one in the shared image gallery, you can select that as well. Then we have our VM size. Now the default here is fine for me, but if you need something like a graphics card in your VMs, for example, change the VM to the appropriate size that best fits your needs. Then we have the number of VMs. This is how many virtual machine session hosts the quick start will build into your pool. Now, if you selected no at the top, then what you're saying is that you've got, for example, 30 users and you'll need 30 VMs. If you chose yes, then you wanted a pooled host pool. And for those 30 users, you have to decide now how many users you want on the same virtual machine at the same time. And for example, you could want 10 users on each VM, so you would just build three. Now we need to select the virtual network that you'll want to build those VMs on. And finally, the resource group where your domain controllers are located. Now, one important thing to note here is that if you have existing domain controllers in the cloud, then they'll need to be within the same subscription that you selected at the beginning because your resource group selections here are scoped to that subscription. So if you have multiple subscriptions like I do and your DCs don't live in the subscription where you're building things through the quick start, then that's not going to work. Once you have the appropriate resource group selected, then go ahead and select one of your domain controllers. 
Quick Start will communicate with this domain controller using the credentials that you provided earlier to create your users and get your groups in here, which is the next step. Now, if you want to build a validation user, go ahead and check that box and add the appropriate UPN and password, and Quick Start will create this new user for you. And whether you choose to do that or not, you can also select existing users or groups and just check the box there for that. And then from the picker, as usual, go ahead and select who you want to give access to. Then click the next button and review everything. Once you're happy, click create. And walking through the quick start is really that simple. But now let's take a look at what we're actually gonna get when we do this. We have two resource groups. They have my prefix and we have one that is labeled deployment and the other WVD. Oh, and remember this feature is in preview. So the name of the resource groups and other resources here are going to be updated from WVD to AVD. So keep that in mind if you're pre-staging resources like I mentioned earlier. If you had chosen an empty subscription, you would have gotten a third resource group labeled prerequisite. This would have been a dedicated resource group for your Azure AD domain services instance. Looking at the deployment resource groups, we see an Azure automation account and runbooks. This is the magic behind the easy button process. And it's a great example of work smarter, not harder. These automation runbooks did all of the work in coordination with the ARM templates to build everything for you. And if you want to unlock your full potential in the cloud, you should be investing in your automation skills so you can do cool things like the ABD Easy button. That was easy. And the last resource group here is for our environment. Here you'll find the ABD resources such as the host pool, app group, and workspace. You'll also find the session host VMs along with their network cards and disks. Now, if you chose to build a personal host pool, that's it for you. But if you built a pooled host pool like I did, then you will also have a storage account and managed identity. This is for my FSLogix user profiles and the managed identity helped set up active directory authentication to my storage account so I didn't have to. Now, as for my experiences with this tool, overall, I love it. The only issue that I ran into in the quick start was one of the prerequisite runbooks having a failure. And I've already talked to the product group about this, so hopefully we'll get an update in there soon. By default, the validation users group that you can see here in Active Directory will be created in the users container. Now this validation group must be synced into Azure AD for the process to complete successfully. And this goes back to how you have Azure AD Connect configured. In my case, I sync from the Corp OU down through the rest of that tree. So I don't sync the entire directory and I wasn't syncing the user's container. So my runbook was failing. And my temporary fix until the product group gets around this was to pre-stage the WVD validation users group into the OU that is being synced into Azure. Once I did that, everything worked like a charm. As for build times, if you chose an empty subscription, this will take about an hour and a half. And most of that time is actually in building Azure AD domain services. If you chose the existing subscription model, this will take about 20 minutes. So what about your experience? The product team wants to hear from you with any issues that you ran into and features you'd like to see added to improve the experience for everyone. And this feedback page is linked in the video description below and your feedback is much appreciated. If you wanna keep learning about Azure Virtual Desktop, go check out my ABD playlist. There we dive into every feature and help you learn all you need to know. Or if you think that you're ready to be AVD certified, go check out the AZ140 video series so you can go and prep for the exam. Thanks for joining me today and I will catch you in our next episode. Happy learning. That was easy.